Reverend Fred Shuttleworth always had the fire to motivate people. Fred said, I am not going to compromise with segregation anymore. He always told us, trust in the Lord, and he'll take care of you no matter where you are, especially if you're doing good. It was time to stop being passive and become aggressive. That is something that I've taken away from Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth. To never be idle when you see a form of injustice. The central truth of the South <laughs> was segregation, white supremacy. And, you know, part of this sort of ignoring it, like it's, it's not a problem. Secondly, it's not a problem that concerns us. It really gained its power from where it was institutionalized and systematized. And so when you institutionalize it, everyone is responsible, but no one's responsible. Everybody had up to 63 made some compromise with segregation. And with 63, with Fred, Fred said, I am not gonna compromise with segregation anymore. I'm gonna live in an integrated United States of America, or I'm not gonna live at all. I'll go on to heaven and claim my reward. <laughs> it was that clear for him. I know my dad was in danger every time he left the house. I knew that something like that happening to Reverend King could also happen to my dad. My mother always told me, people don't need to always know what you're doing because there are people who will work against you. But we were very quiet. In fact, when we came to Cincinnati, most people didn't know we were Shettlesworth. He was always willing to make a leap. Sometimes it appeared to be a little crazy. What was thought to be crazy turned out to be courage wisdom, and necessary witness. When you're talking about Reverend Shuttlesworth, you're talking about one of the all-time greats, the ultimate examples of activist contrast to King, and King's role is the orator. Shuttlesworth felt his role was to be the battlefield general, and his leadership style, given how God had kept him alive and protected him, that he would never ask anyone to do something he wouldn't he himself do. I think of Shuttlesworth as sort of the hero's hero. Everybody in the movement knows about him, and everybody respected him somewhat grudgingly the way that hero's heroes are respected because they shine a spotlight on what everybody else is not doing. And that was Shuttlesworth's role. He was like fighting this incredibly dangerous bulwark alone and often in obscurity. Fred Shuttlesworth helped set the stage for the demonstrations in which Connor then, through his reaction, did a great favor to the civil rights movement. We had been on a march uptown, came back, Bull Connor was sitting in a tank right on the corner across from 16th Street Baptist Church. He got out of the tank. The damn Shuttlesworth, get him, get him! And the fireman, all the there, shot him down. In giving the media these images of police dogs attacking demonstrators, fire hoses knocking down children, Connor helped to bring about the Civil Rights Act of 64. Fred could take 20 people and he could stretch them out to the point that you would think it was 200 down on the street. So by the time the tunes and whatever we were singing got out, then we had won the battle because the news spread and people would be, oh God, how many was it? Shucks, it was 200. Sometimes it was only about 35 or 40. That was Fred. He wrote letters to King pestering him to come to Birmingham and join forces with his Southern Christian Leadership Conference that they should jointly attack segregation in Birmingham. It took four years for him to talk Martin into coming. In one letter he says, when all the flowery speeches have been made, sooner or later somebody has got to commit some action. Shuttlesworth leaves us a legacy of courage and truth and being courageous enough to live with the consequences, and if not, to die.
with the consequences.